The Western Australian Museum, with partner agencies, have been leading marine biodiversity surveys along the Kimberley coast out as far as the edge of the continental shelf. Here are some of the interesting trends discovered by the researchers involved in these surveys. So far, my research into coral biodiversity of the Kimberley Wilderness Area has revealed an incredibly diverse community. The corals out here are surviving in some very harsh conditions. In the intertidal, they're exposed for up to three hours, and offshore, they're submerged, but they're exposed to very large currents. These corals are extremely interesting for the strategies they employ to survive these conditions. The soft coral fauna composition changes dramatically from the inshore close to the land to the offshore atolls. This is influenced by the water turbidity. Closer to shore the water is much more turbid and you find other species than here where the water is very clear. Echinoderms are a diverse group of creatures such as holothurians or sea cucumbers, feather stars known as crinoids, sea stars and the spiny urchins. Dr Merrick Ekins has been looking at how they differ between the inshore and the offshore. And what I find is that the different habitats you'll get dominance of a certain type of species such as holotherians of one species in one area and in another area you'll get a totally different species. To date the Kimberley Biodiversity Project has focused on large-bodied species of mollusks, shells that you would typically display in your bathroom like nautilus, giant clams or triton's trumpet. This year we've added something new to the program. We're focusing on sampling micromollusks, or very small species of mollusks. We do this by literally scrubbing the rocks to get them off, because we can't see them in the field. Dr Lisa Kirkendale will take her samples back and study them in the lab. This is part of an ongoing program to find undocumented molluscan diversity, which until now has been largely unstudied. Through surveying the crustacean fauna of the northern Western Australian coastline, I've noticed that there's been a switch between the inshore and the offshore barnacles that are found in association with other sessile organisms such as sponges, corals and soft corals. Uh, on the inshore there's high abundance, high diversity. Uh, you'd rarely come across a colony without barnacles. On the offshore atolls there's been a distinct drop in the diversity and the abundance uh, of species across the board. Dr John Huseman from the WA Herbarium is examining the seagrasses and algae occurring in the Kimberley region. I've got over, over 60 new species of seaweeds that we're describing and uh, it's a phenomenal group that uh, most people overlook. But many things that you would find in the Great Barrier Reef and have never been found in Western Australia before. It's a very exciting time for a phycologist, which is the person who studies seaweeds. Dr Glenn Moore and Sue Morrison have been researching fish for the Kimberley Biodiversity Project and have uncovered some interesting trends. The most interesting perhaps is on the inshore waters where it's turbid and a lot of freshwater runoff, we have fewer species. And as we move offshore into the clearer waters, we get many more species and in much higher numbers. And these species though are typically wide ranging species found throughout the vast Indo-Pacific region. Rodrigo Garcia from Curtin University is here assessing water quality has found that sediment and plankton both play a major role in the amount of light available to marine life for photosynthesis. The inshore waters of the Kimberley have high levels of sediment which are nutrient rich, resulting in high productivity. What's unique about this area is that the big tides and the strong currents rarely allow this sediment to settle out of the water. Offshore, the waters are much clearer due to the lower amount of phytoplankton and sediment. I use these water quality samples to ground truth satellite imagery from which I can determine big picture of water conditions throughout the Kimberley coast. Oliver Gomez has been collecting information on marine sponges in the Kimberley area. The inshore and offshore areas have very different habitats, information that will help researchers assess the geographical distribution of these species. Antelabasta, for instance, a common species found in the inshore area last year. It's hardly been seen in the offshore reefs of the Kimberley. Linda Avery has been working on the marine worms from the northwest shelf. These have never been collected before and Linda is expecting a whole new sweep of species to come from this collection. One interesting thing that I've found is that the worms on the, on the inner shore are much larger than those found out on the shelf. This is the largest survey of marine worms from the northwest shelf that has ever been collected and therefore we're expecting a whole new sweep of species to come from this collection. The Kimberley is one of the world's last frontiers. This work will help protect and aid conservation management of its pristine waters.